following is a presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Thirty years of the best sports talk in Middle Tennessee, featuring Tennessee Radio Hall of Famer George Plaster, Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame coach Watson Brown, and Young Guns Billy Derrick and Michael Sender. And now here's your host, George Plaster. Hello again, everybody. Welcome in on what is a cloudy, overcast Tuesday in Nashville, Tennessee. The rain moves in around midnight tonight, and then we've got a 100% chance of rain tomorrow, which means it's going to rain. Normally, we begin the show with Terry McCormick's Daily Titans update. However, we're going to change things around a little bit. Terry's going to join us at 5 o'clock for a must-listen-to State of the Union of the Titans. But we begin exactly where we should, and that involves the passing of Mississippi State football coach um, Mike Leach. What a sad story this is. Dead at the age of 61. I think we all suspected yesterday with what we were hearing that this was not going to have a good ending. And Mike passed away late last night. The announcement was made early this morning in Starkville. Coach Watson Brown joins us, as is the case every day. Watson, you as an offensive guru in your coaching world, the two of you all really hit it off. Tell me about the first time you met him. Met Mike with Hal Mummy, George, back, uh, gosh, I can't tell you how many years ago. Hal and I, in, in 85, 86, 84, 85, got together a lot. He was, he was the offensive coordinator at El Paso, and I was the head coach at Rice, and and he would come up with Art Browse. Art Browse was a high school coach at Stevensville, Texas at the time. And we'd talk ball in the spring, the two years I was in Houston. And that's kind of the way that I first knew about Mike. And then I met Mike with Hal uh, maybe five years later and spent some time with him. And we just became friends. I, I would call us professional friends more than just good friends, even though I'd talk to him a couple of times a year, George, on the phone. I, I, my last uh, strength and conditioning coach um, I hired from Mike. It was an assistant at, 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 at for Mike at Washington State, and he just sold the ship on him. But we probably spent 10 minutes talking about the young man I was going to hire and probably the next 30 just talking. And that's when he'd start getting into different things and stories. And I'm standing with my wife in a grocery store in Cookville, Tennessee, and talking to him and listening to – I start chuckling on different things. And I mean, it's just – that's the way Mike's always been, but he was a devout football guy, George. He, it meant a lot to him. He wanted to learn the game. I learned a lot from him, just passing different ideas around. But football meant a lot to him, and and uh, I, that gets overshadowed a little bit because of his personality, I think. But he was a football coach first, and he loved kids, but he loved coaching, wanted to be good at it. Um, that, that's the part that I'd like to say along with everything else that's said about him because you're not going to get anybody to say anything bad about Mike Leach. He was, he was, he was a guy everybody liked. He was the head of the party, as we used to say when we we're growing up. And uh, if Mike was at the party, he was the hit. And, uh, but it's just devastating to me. Makes, makes us all make me think here in the last two days, George, that, Enjoy life, man. Just yeah. enjoy what we have. We never know when our days are numbered. And I saw that I think the reason this 
was delayed a little bit. Uh, he gave different organs to different things that I read right. this afternoon. Yeah. And uh, it's, I guess one of his daughters had uh, it said that. So pretty neat. And just that, that doesn't surprise me that Mike would do that. Watson, I, I was telling you earlier, the coverage of him since it got out, I want to say, I don't know, 9, 930 this morning, I would describe the coverage on the ESPN family of networks as dadgum near wall to wall. <laughs> and it really speaks volumes about how intriguing he was to people. I mean, all these different ESPN personalities who would deal with him around games they were going to broadcast, they all had some funny story with him. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I would doubt, I wouldn't doubt everybody that dealt with him has had a funny story with him. I don't, I don't think he passed anybody up. I mean, I was reading the one with, with Lincoln Riley when Lincoln was with him somewhere. And oh, always in a, one of the offices, I guess, when he was at Texas Tech. And he said, the phone rings and Mike answers it. Normally secretaries answer the phone, but Mike picks it up and answers it. He said, well, I guess they're out in the lobby of their football offices. <laughs> and it's a wrong number. And, and Lincoln says he talks to the dude for 30 minutes on a wrong number. The, then they lost the line or whatever. Mike calls the number back and talks to him for another 30 minutes. I mean, I'm reading this story this morning and I'm sitting here saying, ain't no doubt. I can see the man talking to somebody. He has no idea who it is. And they just start talking. That's That was Mike. Watson, when you all first met, because you had that reputation back then of being an offensive guru, you were running a lot of spread stuff at Vandy before yeah. anybody had heard of the spread. Was it him picking your brain more or you picking his? No, it was, it was always, he was, he always wanted to pick mine, but it was, I was always picking his. When you get together in those days, George, we'd get together as coaches and it might be two or three of us. And there weren't that many of us that were passionate in those days. So you you kind of got to the guys that were kind of doing some of that. Right. And try to learn from each other. And and uh, Mike was an offensive line coach in those days. He was not he was not the all guru. Hal was the one doing all the stuff, and Mike was his line, Mike was his line coach at Kentucky. When they were together at Kentucky, Mike was the offensive line coach. And uh, and then Mike grew into being the offensive coordinator and moved on up. But it's a great story I love to tell. Mike and Hal, this was after my Rice days, and they were at Valdosta State now. And I guess I would have been at Vanderbilt at that point. And, and Hal was now the head coach at Valdosta State. And they're slinging around a little bit and doing some stuff. But – they go to a division three practice and to watch because it was an all a, a passing team and, and Mike and Hal go and they're working on their two minute offense. Now this is how stuff works. And Hal has told me the story. They're working on their two minute offense. They're, they're watching it. And Hal looks over at Mike and says, you know, why wouldn't you just run that offense a whole game? Why, why wouldn't we think about doing that? And he says, Mike says, that's a hell of an idea. So they go back to Valdosta State, and that's where the air raid started, George, from a Division three practice watching the two-minute offense. And they put this thing together, were very successful doing it there, I think won some national championships. And then CM hires Hal at Kentucky. That's really what got them both started was the Kentucky job, and they did so well. Nobody but Spurrier was throwing it in the SEC at that point still. And I, now I'm gone, and I'm somewhere else by then. I guess I might have been at Mississippi State. I think I was at Mississippi State then. But they, them and Spurrier were really still, still at that point, and that's now the 90s. And still the SEC wasn't throwing the ball a ton. Right. And uh, when they came into the SEC, they just went nuts with it and were successful. And then, then the Bob Stoops gets who is the defensive coordinator. This is how it all works. Bob Stoops is the defensive coordinator at Florida with Spurrier trying to stop Hal and Mike's stuff. 
gets the Oklahoma job and hires Mike Leach as his offensive coordinator. That's the way Mike got started. Did real well at Oklahoma and quickly. I think within a year, maybe he wasn't there. I know over two, uh, but Mike did well and immediately Texas Tech jumps. Now Mike gets to do it the way he wants to do it and takes off from there. So that's how quick this business works sometimes. When you get hot, you get hot. Sure. But it's amazing to me that this whole concept came from a Division Three practice, watching the team practice. And and Hal's, Hal is really the one that first said it. And then after I heard that, I said, I don't know why we all didn't think of it that way. Watson, when Tony Basilio comes on, and I know he's listening right now and, and probably taking some mental notes on this, you know, we're going to ask him about how how close Leach's deal came to ending up in Knox, excuse me, <coughs> that wasn't very professional, uh, <laughs> ending up in Knoxville. Tony, if you're watching that, that's not broadcasting 101 right there. But Watson, there were schools that absolutely would not even consider him, decided that he was weird, that he wasn't, you know, well, socially and, and, what they were looking for. Did that bother him at all? Heavens no, not Mike. I mean, Mike's Mike. He didn't, He don't care about what somebody thinks. He doesn't say one thing to one guy to make him happy and another to Mike. That's what I loved about him. He, he was just Mike. And he just didn't care who it was, whether it's an ESPN announcer or whether it's a guy calling them the wrong number. Mike was Mike. And, and uh, Mike, what happened to Mike, I think wasn't his weirdness. It was what happened with Craig James's son at Texas Tech. Right. And when that went down, Mike got a bad name, and I think it wasn't fair. But that's what that's really what hung over Mike. Not not the weirdness. The people everywhere he was, the never ever heard anybody say, This guy, get him out of here. He's weird. They loved it. And yeah. I mean and, and whether it was Starkville, Mississippi, and I've coached in Starkville, Mississippi. I know, I know the the personalities around the Starkville, Mississippi, and Mike went right in there in his weird way. And and they loved him. They 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 absolutely loved him. I think I thought they just loved him a lot more than they did Mullen. And and and, and he did a good job and left to go to Florida, but at the same time when Mike came in there after the guy from Moorhead, I guess it was. When Mike came in there, I just he they just jumped all over him and they they really, really like him. Yeah. We're laughing now, but this is very sad. This is way too early at 61. Yeah. Yeah. It is way too early. And it's like I said earlier to you, maybe on on here on the shore, maybe it wasn't, but you don't see this happen now, George, as much. You don't see these massive heart attacks on younger people like we used to. Right. I think the medical world has gets a hold of it before it gets to that point. You have different surgeries now. You're back at work in two weeks. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike had been to a practice on Saturday and was at home Sunday morning when the way I understand it happened, and he was going to a practice Sunday. Uh, and But he hadn't felt good for a while, they said, because he'd missed some functions that Mike don't normally miss. And so it tells me he hadn't been feeling good. And I don't know if they just hadn't found any issues with him yet or whatever. But um, you just don't hear of these massive heart attacks like we used to. And I think that's part of this, too. It was just so quick and so definite, George. And and uh, and pra praise him. It was his best team there. I mean, he is eight and four. It's the best record he'd had there at State so far. And he had the Rodgers, the quarterback that he had built into just a great player. And I think he's got another year still to play if he wants to. Yeah. Um, but and that's Mike did it wherever he went. And he's the only guy. Hal kind of even left it. Mike was the only one. That just, and I, for the first time this year, I started seeing him run the ball a little more. But Mike thought the runs were all these bubbles and everything that everybody are running now. And that was Mike's running game back in and 10 years ago at Texas Tech, he said, well, that is a run. <laughs> he goes um, down as a pass, but it's a run. A couple of things. I saw a human quality to Lane Kiffin today that looked very genuine in real sadness about losing a friend. People 
tried to make them out as rivals, but I saw a human side to Lane Kiffin today that I really liked, and I am glad that Mike Leach was able to go out a winner uh, in well, his final game. George, and I'll, I will talk about that quickly. I know we've got to get ready to go here, but coaches, when I was at Vanderbilt, Johnny Majors was a very good friend of me. With their, their, the rival piece is there. And, man, when you go to recruit against them or you play them on that Saturday afternoon once a year, it's on. It's on 100%. But the respect so much in the coaching field for each other, when when you know the guy that your arch rival is doing a really good job, you know he's good and he's formidable and you got your hands full, you respect that. And uh, they won't publicly ever come out and say that. I never came out and talked till till after I left Vanderbilt that Coach Majors and I were good friends and vice versa, but we were. And uh, uh, that that's that's just I remember Bill Yeoman at Houston when I was at Rice. We were very good friends, and yet arch rivals with the schools, arch rivals. And so it's it's just the coaching world's that way. It I would bet. Anybody that's coached against Mike would would have the respect for Mike that way. And I'm glad to hear Lane said that. Uh, I know Lane would feel that way, knowing Mike. And Lane knows a good football coach. I just didn't know if Lane would say it or not. But I'm yeah, glad well, to hear he, that. Oh, he absolutely did. I'm glad it, to it hear was, that he did that. It was pretty touching. Yeah. I know we got to go to the break. Tony Basilio will join us from Knoxville. A lot of things to talk to, including – his remembrances of how close Mike Leach came to being Tennessee's football coach. This is Main Street Media Television. Buying or selling a home can be a very personal experience. Why not go with the team that receives nearly all of their business from referrals? Clearly a trusted name in real estate. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners has sold more than 500 homes in the last seven years. Voted best in Sumner County multiple times. Proven to be trusted with your most personal assets. Call the Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners at 615-906-8458. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners. Middle Tennessee's most trusted team in realty. I highly recommend Sumner Funeral and Cremation because of their caring nature and attentiveness to detail. Pre-planning your funeral now will bring you peace of mind and less stress to your loved ones. When the chaos of losing you happens, your family can honor and celebrate your life, knowing things are happening just as you wanted them to. Pre-planning determines the details of your funeral, cemetery services, and can be less expensive. We are honored to serve you and are always here for you in your time of need. Sumner Funeral and Cremation. Traditional. Affordable. Dignified. SumnerFuneral.com Jody Jones Dentistry can handle all your dental needs from the basics to cosmetic procedures. All of this in the nicest dental facility I have ever seen. Jody has done it right. They're located conveniently at 55 Music Square East. And for an appointment, it's simple. Dial 615-259-5100 and tell them Plaz sent you. When you're thinking about golf, consider Riverside Golf Links. Under new ownership, the course has improved dramatically. It's now 27 holes, complemented by a nine-hole executive course. Book a tee time now at 615-847-5074 and get ready to enjoy the beauty of golf in the old Hickory area at Riverside Golf Links. I'm Bart Durham. I was sworn in as a lawyer in 1963, and I've been working as a lawyer since then. We're a firm that does exclusively personal injury, a lot of tractor-trailer crashes. Insurance companies will open up their checkbooks when you force them to. We have systems that work. We get the most money for our clients in the shortest amount of time. I'm Blair Durham. My dad and I want to help. Give us a call at 615-242-9000. This is Eric Berner with Rock Hassle Wealth Advisors. I help people in the pursuit of making their money live as long as they do. People hire me because I use a customized, individualized, and personal approach for the person I'm working with. Everyone's situation is different. If you've lost a spouse or a parent and want to make sure your inheritance is utilized, 
and does not just disappear, I can help with that. Call me at 615-235-1058 or email eric at rockcastlewealth.com. Welcome back into the George Plaster Show. It's almost time for Tennessee Tuesday with Tony Basilio. First few words on our sponsors for this segment, Direct Radon Mitigation. Have you heard of the high levels of radon in Middle Tennessee? Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer. The only way to know is to test for it. Visit directradonmitigation.com to schedule a free estimate and also complete service heat and air. And here are a few words on complete service. Complete service heat and air can clean your coils, check out your motor, and make sure you have warm air throughout those cold winter months. Complete service heat and air is located in White Bluff, Tennessee. We do service and repair on heating and air the right way. 24-7 service. Call us at 615-797-3997. Serving Cheatham, Davidson, Dixon, Hickman, Humphreys, Montgomery, and Williamson counties. So let's head to Knoxville, Tennessee, and say hello to Tony Basilio. Tony, I got to believe that it's been a really interesting day on your show up there, probably with a lot of Mike Leach remembrances. No question, George. And I, I heard you on the tees talking about how you know, the one thing about Mike Leach, and Watson said this earlier, is he just made life better by being a part of it, let alone college football, you know, and, and Heupel's um, uh, tribute that he, that he put online where he said, Hey, he took a chance on a guy, you know, I don't say this glibly. I, I believe sports changes people's lives. You know, you look at a, a guy like Heupel and is he in the spot he's in today? You know, if you can, how seriously you can take somebody in a Santa Claus hat, but I, I certainly mean that. I mean, it oh, changed I, his life. Listen, I, I think you're dead on right with that. Tony, go back a few years ago now to when this whole thing went down. Yeah. How close was Tennessee to hiring Mike Leach? You know, I'm going to give you the short answer here. This is this is all-time classic. You know, at the, at the University of Tennessee, people have said to me, I can't believe you stayed there like 30 years doing what you're doing. And I'm going, hey, look, it's a talk show host dream. I mean, they're, they're simply, you, you don't have to make things up. They just fall in your lap. So, so I remember this like it was yesterday, okay, on the Westwood One Radio Network, as they say in the trade. It was a Thursday night. I was working out at the YMCA, calling my cell phone. And the Y I go to, they don't care. You talk on the phone. People scream and yell and anything goes. Anyway, so um, somebody says, you're not going to believe this, but they're worried about our athletic director, who was John Curry at the time. Now, yeah. I'll remind you, John Curry had the Greg Schiano thing, and then Tennessee's fans had a revolt, and then there was something else, and then there was something else, and then anyway. So they get to the end of the week, and all of a sudden it's like, well, which coach are we going to hire now? John Curry wasn't heard from. No one had heard from John Curry. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody knew, and they were worried about him. I mean, literally, like, what's going on with this guy? I wish I could make this up. I'm not. He goes off the grid on Tennessee. Uh, the, the chancellor at the time, Bev Davenport, was extremely involved in this and wanted to be kept in the loop. And John Curry's one of these guys that wanted everything to be secretive. And you couldn't have had a more, more oil and water type situation. Well, this guy um, disappears, and then he reappears, and he reappears with Mike Leach. Nobody knew it. He's flying back to Knoxville thinking that he's hired Mike Leach. Mike Leach has him flying back to Knoxville thinking that he's hired for the job. He gets back to Knoxville. They say to him, where have you been? He says, I got Mike Leach. And they say, uh, no, you don't. You're fired. You don't have anybody. <laughs> That's what happened. So... 
shaking his head. And I am not making any of that up. I wish no. I was. No, that, it's that's true. It's a movie, is what it is. Yeah. That, that I can that that story is true from both sides. Yes. Dumbest because coaching Mike, search of Mike all time. Mike will tell the story the same. Mike has told the story the same way before. So. Oh my God! Watching his search of all time. Uh, George, if you Thomas. remember the interview you set up for me with Leach, he <laughs> hammered Tennessee in that deal. Oh. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> and, so and Tony Mike would have been fantastic. I'm telling you, the state would have loved it. They would have absolutely loved it. And uh, there's never a place he's been they didn't love it. Everywhere he's gone, the fans love it. And uh, it's just he's only he's only been fired once, and that really wasn't for winning games. That was at Texas Tech over an incident, right? And then so ever ever my tennis everybody says Mike wouldn't have fit Tennessee. I'm telling you, Mike would have fit Tennessee. Just See, that's about. funny because I was one of the people that didn't think he would fit. Oh, I'm telling but you, Watson, being somebody who has a crush on you, I'm telling you, anything <laughs> you say. I'm not arguing anything Watson Brown says. This is Man Crush City over here. Tony, what people love about Mike Leach is that he was Mike Leach. Yeah. He did. He, I told a story, and I don't think if you you were on early to hear it when I talked about him picking up the phone in the office one day, and it's a and it's a wrong number, <laughs> and he, and he talks to this guy that called on the wrong number for an hour, for an hour. <laughs> <on the phone. laughs> Lincoln Riley is the one that's told this story. He was standing there next to it. And Tony, he said, I'll quickly just tell you so it'll yeah. lead to what I'm saying. The phone rings in the lobby. The secretary's not there. Mike answers. It's the wrong number. Mike starts talking to him, talks to him for 30 minutes, loses the call, sees the number on the no, dial, calls him back and talks for another 30 minutes. That's Mike. I mean, he liked people. He just mm -hmm. – and Mike was Mike. That's why the Tennessee people would have loved him because there was no put on to him whatsoever. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think this year when he's on the sidelines and he goes over. <laughs> I love this. Never saw a coach do this. They're losing to somebody. The receivers are playing awful. All their receivers' chairs are lined up in the back back there to sit in. Mm -hmm. And when the coach talks to them when they come off the field, he goes over and picks all the chairs up and throws them away. <laughs> And said after the game, they haven't played well enough to have a chair to sit in. They're going to have to stand the rest of the day. Well, I mean, if somebody had said, who do you think did that? I said, that's Mike Leach. I promise you Mike's the one that did that. Guys, I don't know if either one of you heard this today, but when they had Feinbaum on earlier, about an hour after it got out that Mike had passed, Feinbaum talked about a, an interview he did with him when he was in Birmingham. And something came up about an Auburn or an Alabama coach, and Feinbaum wouldn't say who it was. But Leach in the interview said, Oh, yeah, that guy's a cheater. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, he says what he thinks. Yeah. He don't care. Yeah. He absolutely don't care. Oh, oh my Lord. His quotes so, about marriage and that sort of stuff, where, I mean, he just says the most politically incorrect things. And, oh. And you know the thing about and gets the, away with it, Tony. Away you got with away it. with and that's it. That's the thing, right? In this day and age, you got to appreciate people like Charles Barkley. Some of those people just have the ability to say whatever they want to say. Get Everybody else gets canceled. They get smiled at. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, that's Mike. Yeah, that, that 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 is Mike. There's there's no doubt. We're going to miss him. And and uh, but you said it the best. He he didn't just touch sports people. He touched a lot of people. Yeah. And he and usually he made your life better because he yeah. was not a negative dude. Now he'd harp on things, but he really wasn't negative even when he'd harp on those things. Right. I mean, he <laughs> I, I I there's a thousand stories. But I said this to George before you came on, Tony. What the thing I loved about Mike that I wanted to say was when you he was around football people, it was none of this stuff. It was football. The man loved football. He wanted to be a great football coach. He wanted to study it and be the, do it the best he could. He wanted to learn. He was very willing to throw his stuff out to you. Uh, he was a football coach. He wasn't like that at all when he's around football people. Now, when he's around kids at practice, he'd do some of that crazy stuff. I've been at some of these practices. He'd do that at practice. 
he'd be crazy like that. He'd just pop something out to one of the players, and everybody would start giggling. But around coaches, when it was football, he was 100% football guy. Watson, obviously, we eventually bring Tony on to talk University of Tennessee. What questions do you have for your son? I got some for you, Tony. That's what what, is, no, that's I what saw, it I saw what Tillman's, I Tillman's not playing. Right. Right. Tillman's not going to play in the Orange Bowl. Right. Is Hyatt going to play or not? Uh, if you'd asked me last week, I'd have said it was 60 40 yes. You're asking me this week. It is 60 40 no, trending towards 70 30, trending toward 80 20. I don't think he's playing. Wow. I just hate that. I, w- I hate that we've gotten to that point. I, it's no no I disrespect know. to him because it's happening all over the country. I know. But I mean, when you're playing in such a big game as the Orange Bowl, right. does that mean, guys, that the Orange Bowl just doesn't have the clout it used to because of these Final Fours now? Or is that just the way it is? And are we going to start seeing people not playing the Final Four? I saw an Ohio State kid that's not, but he's yeah. been hurt all year. So that's that's a kind of a different deal. I think if college football Watson doesn't address this, I think you're going to see, and I hope I'm wrong, teams that get eliminated like when they go to that 12 team and you're in your senior year and you were hoping to do something, you get eliminated. And I think you're going to see kids are going to opt out their last couple of regular season games. Hey, as long as the NFL puts up with it, doesn't punish kids for it, doesn't care. No. From their perspective, they're getting a fresher football player with less – wear and tear on their bodies, if anything. And here, you know, in Hyatt's case, he's a few yards. I'm talking about a couple of catches away from Tennessee's all-time record. And even that isn't enough to entice him, apparently, to play in the game. That Most people don't think he's going to play. What, what's the – Tony, let me ask you this. What is the reaction of the fan base to that probability? They're accepting of it because, like Watson said, we've become – condition to going yeah. oh well that's that's major college football it's sad because you know guys if that continues and if they don't figure out a way to stop this i think you're going to see late season opt-outs i really do because i think that's the next step because this stuff doesn't the toothpaste never goes back in the tube and if you start seeing late season opt-outs i ask both of you what what is that and a lot of people look at this orange bowl and go What's the point? You know, Dabo Swinney, they just had a, a great, another great first round defensive players um, opt out today. That's the first opt out they've ever had uh, at uh, Clemson. And, and one of their calling cards was that their culture is different. No, Dabo, your culture is not different. No. This is, you can say that all you want and you can act like that. And people can drink your bath water and they can act like you're different. You're no different than the rest of, of college football. You are no different. I'm sorry. It just means and, they played in more games that had yeah. national title. That's, no, that's exactly what it is. That's right. That's he, right. He, he hasn't played in the in the non-national title games. I mean, that's, right. that's ridiculous to say that to our culture. Uh, yes. That kind of bothers me to tell you the truth. And they've been know. doing it. You know, they it's say absolutely it. not true. That and you know they do it though. You know they say he sets himself up as different, and that's my culture. And as if to say, well, you know, Josh Heupel's kids don't care. Well, what about today, Dabo? Do we say that now? You had a kid. You had a kid opt out. Do we? Do we now just shelve that? Because by the way, if you play in more of these type bowl games, you're going to have more kids opt out. I mean, that's a sure. newsflash for you. Well, and you start having better and better players all the time. You're going to have more opt out too. That's got a little bit to do with it. I'm telling well, that's you. True. The, yeah. the other thing, guys, that I read, and Tony, I want to make sure this is true. I read where Hyde had taken some of his NIL money and was going to send pay for some of the families to get down to Miami to the Orange Bowl the, with players on the team. It, is that what I read? Is that true? Yeah, that's hardly – that's exactly – what he did is he worked an NIL deal with the Hyatt folks. So a part of that is that they're going to it take their like family high members hotel, on his team. Hot hotels, yeah. Hot hotels. Hotel. Okay. They're going to put people up um, that are coming to the bowl game, the whole shebang. That's fantastic. I love that. I, I love that. 
that's money that could have gone in his pocket in some other way to me, Tony, that he said, no, I want to help my Absolutely. teammates. And Absolutely. that's the first one I've heard do something like that, by the way. So he's, mm -hmm. he's the first one I've heard that about. I yep. hope we hear more and more of that on these guys making millions and these other guys not making anything. I hope we hear more and more of that as time goes on. Well, you know, we better or you're going to have um, an imbalance in these locker rooms, which I know coaches are very concerned about. Yeah. What's the what's the what's the scuttlebutt around Knoxville, Tony, about Milton? They think he's going to play really good. They think he's going to be the guy next year. Or are they in a wait and see, or do they just not think he is what, the guy? What do you think they say behind the scenes about Milton? I would probably say the latter of what I just <laughs> said. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> am I right or wrong? You're right. They're, they really hope. Look. As, as much as you can take this from somebody in a Santa hat. And, and by the way, I debated whether or not to do this in the Santa hat. And I thought about what would Mike Leach do? Oh, and Mike would have the, the interview in the Santa hat. Mike Santa would hat. have the hat on right now. So your questions about Milton, and I think they hope that he surprises them would be a, uh, would be a charitable way of putting it. They really hope he surprises them. Well, I do too, because I think he's a great kid. I'd love to see him yeah. turn it, turn the switch and prove us all wrong. Yeah, it'd be uh, a great story. But, you know, he got away with that last game at Vanderbilt, Tony. He got away with it. Yep. If, if that had been somebody besides Vanderbilt, he wouldn't have gotten away with that. And You're right. They were just able to run the ball so well that night that he just didn't have to make plays right. at all. The first touchdown, the receiver could have fair caught it. Yeah, it was That's right. 10 yards under thrown, but the guy was so far behind him, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't and, and, you know, guys, I'm such a, by nature, caught like you see it person that I criticized his play on our post-game show. And I had fans call me saying, but it was 65 to nothing. You can't make the – I'm like, listen, listen. <laughs> I could have run for 100 yards the way Vanderbilt was. I mean, Vanderbilt didn't even try on defense. Their, their rushing defense was – it was absurd for that to be a collegiate uh, Division One level effort. Yeah. Lack of the execution, just the effort on the field. What are you – what last one for me, George, and then you can ask if Tony doesn't have any for me. I'll keep asking them because I've – some things I wanted to hear from him. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what is going on in the transfer portal? Not the ones leaving, but – who you're here and they're trying to yeah. bring in. They've got, uh, they're involved with a very good running, a very good wide receiver uh, from um, Missouri, who's a slot receiver. Uh, another one from Mississippi State. The issue right now that I think, and I think a lot of the reason you're not seeing much action coming from the portal, you're seeing action going to the portal, but not coming out of the portal, is I think this thing butts up against that signing day, which is a week from Wednesday. Yeah. And guys, I really believe that a lot of these coaches have made a lot of promises to a lot of kids that they can't break till after next Wednesday. Now, you, know, you did that. Exactly right. right. Yeah. That's gotta be what's going on because we're seeing so little activity, but Tennessee is uh, hunting there. They're hunting defensive help uh, there as well. Um, they're fighting uh, Alabama for a kid from Smyrna who moved up his announcement to tomorrow. Yeah, he's a uh, good player. Our linebacker, that's a great player right there. If they can get yeah, him, he's a good player. Them, he's and that will give them the top two players in the state, which hasn't happened in a while. Uh, Josh Heupel got intimately involved in his recruitment down the stretch, which shows you um, what they think about him when the head coach jumps on and jumps on the train. That's saying, hey, I we we really need to get this guy, and so um, Tennessee needs help defensively everywhere next season, everywhere. Yeah, George, what you got? Well, let me ask this: If Hyatt's gone, and we knew Cedric Wilson was going to be gone, Tillman, he, uh, Tillman, Tillman. What they, Cedric, good lord, yeah. I've lost it. Is there any problem next year, depth wise, at wide receiver? Not really, because what they're going to do, I just think this guy's system is so good. The issue becomes, who's your quarterback? 
because wide receiver wise, they're going to have, they're going to have capable bodies and Brew McCoy's coming back, uh, who, uh, this year was happy to play second, third fiddle. He's frontline player guys. That's a frontline talent right there. And there are, uh, Ramel Keaton's another guy who's got frontline ability. And, and you get a couple of these kids out of the portal, which Tennessee will, they'll get somebody out of that portal and you don't need flashy in their offense. You just, you need functionality. You need somebody that functions on the field, understands their, from both a quarterback and a receiver. And Watson was talking about it earlier in the year, but that's kind of the brilliance of the offense is the simplicity of it. It's not like just anybody can do it though. I don't want to make it sound like that, but there, I think there are enough talented guys out there to uh, to make this thing work next season, and I think they have enough on the roster. Yeah, I think the key is the QB is going to be the the whole key. No doubt, one hundred percent. They're going to no. get receivers because people are going to want to play in that offense. That's yeah. right. They're they're going to get one, but the quarterback's the key. And the last thing, George, before we let Tony go, you know, we you were talking about Josh Heupel and Mike mm-hmm. Leach and mm-hmm. that connection. And then the air raid, which really was how mummy, and then Mike mm-hmm. Leach took it from there. Then Lincoln Riley, everybody has taken the air raid and done different things with it. The two true air raid guys are still the two guys, Al mummy and Mike Leach. They're the two. Everybody else has taken it and done something else with it. Josh Heupel's stuff, guys, is not air, air raid stuff. It really is not. His is a complete different stuff. He's come up with himself. There's not a lot of the air raid principles in what I see. That's interesting. There's there is a little bit, but it is it is much more not air raid over being air raid. And I love it when somebody says, "Well, he's one of the air raid guys." Yeah, he is, but he's taking it in a in a total different way. My uh, Lincoln Riley is taking it in a total different way. He does not really run the air raid now. There's a lot of other stuff that he does, and just a few of the principles he uses that I see. Tony. There's your Friday topic to get him started. I'm telling you, Watson Brown is oh, here he goes. It is spun gold when it Look emanates from his head. Now. Spun sweat. gold. Spun gold. Uh, Look at his head swell. We can barely He's fit man. Hey, in hey. Tony, don't, speaking of head swells, yeah. the guy on the left over here has got the biggest swell. And I'm not talking about yours. I'm talking about the other <laughs> guy over here. You're talking about now, a swelled head now. Don't let him fool you. You know, uh, George, George is the man too. I mean, I just, you know, it's been such a blessing, guys, being on with you guys all oh, year. Please, it's the other way around. Tony, what man. you've done for us, man, we ought to, I'm Amen. Sure, George, thank you. Because it's thank been you. fantastic. It, I can't wait for Tuesday yeah. till you come on. I, we've I, had a lot of fans say the same thing. So I'll tell you what I for doing you guys. This my, my brother over here has made me some, cause I'm in Pennsylvania with family and he uh, made me some homemade manicotti, which you, what you call it. We call it managot. And I've been watching, smelling this and him eating some a few minutes ago. And so you were ready for this place. to be over six minutes ago. You said it. I didn't <laughs> get on out of here. Then take care guys. See you dog. Okay. Oh, he is. He has been such a blessing to this. Oh show. man, what what a blessing for us! We'll go to the break, and then I'm going to ask one of these bowl questions that Tony brought up a couple of minutes ago, and it'll be interesting to see where Watson goes with this. Stay tuned. This is Main Street Media Television. For Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly, they welcome every opportunity to serve and satisfy their clients. Whether you are looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and remodel is unique, luxurious, completed on time, and within budget. Contact them today to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects by logging on to DonnellyTimmons.com.
and WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics. We pride ourselves in providing access, innovation, and a patient experience second to none. Access to care and treatment when you need it. Innovation with medical-led cosmetics and various on-site technologies for full-service treatments with a customer experience that is calming, casual, and effective. Independently owned, providing medical, surgical, pediatric, and cosmetic dermatology and more. Visit WellSkinMD.com to schedule your appointment today. WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics. Access to healthier skin. It's your last chance to get a spring tune-up for summer. Complete service heat and air can clean your coils. Check out your motor and make sure you have cold air on that first hot day of summer. Complete service heat and air is located in White Bluff, Tennessee. We do service and repair on heating and air the right way. 24-7 service. Call us at 615-797-3997. That's 615-797-3997. Serving Cheatham, Davidson, Dixon, Hickman, Humphreys, Montgomery, and Williamson counties. Have you heard about the high levels of radon in Middle Tennessee? Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer, second only to smoking, and has no color, no taste, and no smell. The only way to know if you have radon is to test for it. Durad Radon Mitigation offers testing for small and large-scale residential and commercial properties plus mitigation services. Visit DuretRadonMitigation.com to request testing or get a free estimate for mitigation. That's DuretRadonMitigation.com. Since 1865, the First Baptist Church of Gallatin on Winchester Street has served its community by catering to the least, the last, and the lost, providing a church of welcome used by God to save the lost, transform the saved, and impact its community. As a proud multi-ethnic congregation, Pastor Derek Jackson personally welcomes you to join them in fellowship Sunday mornings at 8 in person or at 1045 in person or online at firstbaptistgallatin.org. First Baptist Gallatin on Winchester Street, serving with open arms as a true church of welcome. We're back, and don't forget, at 5 o'clock... Terry McCormick will join us, and we're going to get into a state of the union of the Titans that I think you're going to find very interesting and perhaps a little depressing. Watson, I know it says on the bottom there, Watson's Tennessee ana analysis, but I've got to ask this question. So we've got all these kids opting out of these bowl games, and in truth, it's hard to be all that critical because, you know, their pro futures are on the line and whatever. Is the only solution that the grant and aid that a kid receives has the language that says, if you are healthy, you must play in any postseason activity we get involved in? I don't think it'd fly. I'm not sure it'd be legal. You're saying in a court. I don't it think the courts right. would let that let that happen. I think okay. somebody then, would take that to court and it'd be knocked down on the spot. You can't make somebody play in a game, George. You just there's no way you can do that. I mean, well, yeah, but if you're accepting if you're accepting tuition, grant and aid, nil, whatever. I mean, I don't think there's some recourse. I, I, these kids don't need that money now. They're making more money in that tuition that these kids that are coming out. So they don't care about that scholarship anymore. When you, when you do that, you're coming out and you've probably already finished school. Anyhow, maybe not have your degree, but you're through with your classes and you're, you're not going back in the spring. You're going to start working out to get ready for the draft somewhere these kids go to Florida, to California, and work with these different gurus, and 
make them bigger and stronger and faster that I wonder if that's not just a moneymaker sometimes the same way, but I just don't see there is an answer to it. When, when they start doing it, it started with the NFL coming out early. And the ones that it pretty much now is to the point, if you're not in the final four, you but the better players seem to come out early, George, they do. Right. And now the transfer portal, you're even leaving and not playing in the game and going into the transfer portal. So this thing is fixing to be a major mess to the point we're going to have games canceled. We're going to have a team cancel a game because they don't have enough players to play. A, a bowl game. game. I'm talking about a bowl game. Right. It's, it's, that's next thing's going to happen, and I bet you by next year it does happen. It doesn't and, look like it's going to happen this year. It got up to 12. I think the high was 13 transfer portal kids on one team. And given it's going to be 18 to 20 next year. Given the fact that ESPN owns – about 98% of the bowls now. I think it's like 41 of the 42 are ESPN properties of some sort. When they start losing programming, then the stuff's going to fly. Yep. Yep. And the, and, and the, the, the thing that might back it up is they might back up the going into the portal for three weeks or something where the kids would stay and play and then go to the portal after the bowl game's over. That might be a something the NC2A would put into place. But the, the NIL is one thing. The transfer portal, to me, is even a bigger mistake than the way they've done the NIL. That has turned into major cheating. These All these kids now are getting agents. They're all got somebody that, that a, I'm not saying Alabama does it. Let's just use Alabama. Alabama calls this agent. Let this kid know that if he comes out, we will have a million dollars worth of interest here. I mean, it's that simple, George. Sure. And that's, that's what's going on now. And it's getting downright ugly. And uh, there's kids, Sam Hartman. He is Wake Forest. Now, he hasn't come out yet, but he is Wake Forest. I mean, if there's ever been a Wake Forest kid, but if somebody gets to somebody that gets to him and says, Sam, I'm going to pay you a million and a half if you'll come here for your last year. How do you turn that down? How in the world? I mean, Max player. May. I was just gonna. I was just about to bring Drake May up. Drake May. That was the rumors out there, and I'm not going to get into it because he's my brother. But that they were chasing Bert Drake, and there was all kind of money being thrown at Drake May, and he decided to stay. And I knew he would because he is Carolina blue, and he'll be gone by next December anyway, and he's probably making good money at Carolina already, guys. I don't know what he's making, but I bet he's making good money. And he's Carolina blue all the way down to his great grandparents. I mean, this is this goes way back. I didn't think he would come out because a year from now, there's no telling what he's he's gonna be. If he stays healthy, I'll tell you, I'll say it right now. He will be the first pick in the draft next year. He well, will be the first pick in the draft. And if you're Drake May, you've got that quarterback spot locked up. I mean, you're you're the guy in Chapel Hill. Why would you go somewhere where to where maybe you you have a guy under you that might have have capability to beat you out? Oh, I mean, he, that ain't happening. I mean, he's that good, and if somebody's paying him two million dollars, they ain't gonna have him sitting the bench. I'm telling you, that's not gonna happen. He's not gonna. He'll still have to earn it, but at the same time, I mean, he walking in, they wouldn't be going after him if they thought they had the guy that could beat him out on the team. Let's just say that right now. Well, it's like it's like the AJ Swan thing at Vanderbilt. I mean, he he's their guy. I don't get why he would want to leave. You've got an SEC starting spot locked up. You know, there's a lot of players enter the portal you, that you don't, don't think, leave. You don't think there aren't schools yapping at him right now? Do you really want to go through three years of getting your butt kicked, of being fifty six to nothing against your arch rival? You don't think they're not trying to sell but that? That's, I mean, that's not how it is at Vandy. The 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 winning they're starting to win now, so it's not like they went oh and oh and whatever in the SEC. They're starting to win. Yeah. They got their ass kicked. Yeah, by yeah. Tennessee, a top yeah. five team in the country. And and so that could never happen again. 
I'm not saying it can't, but for Swan, I mean, you, you, I, I just don't get why he would want to leave an SEC starting spot that he has locked up. Guys, you're, you're talking the wrong talk. It has nothing to do with, oh, I like this school. I like this offense. It's dollar sign. It's dollars, period. It's not got anything to do but dollars. And if, and if somebody wanted Swan bad enough to offer him $1.5 million, he'd be gone. I think – He's probably – it about be a year from now that that happens. I think all the injuries he had and everything, that, that big money didn't come to him. Maybe maybe a school on the level he's at but is not a private school or whatever maybe has. But I don't think the big bucks is coming to him yet. But if he has a real good year next year, they will. And Vanderbilt's got to decide. All these schools, my brother right now, how much money can we come up with to keep these kind of kids in our program? What kind of alum is going to give us this kind of money to keep this kid around here? That's where all the fundraising is going now, guys. All this facility fundraising, all that, it's out the door now. It's tried up. They're, they're, they're all now having to raise money to, to bring kids in and to keep them. Got to stop there. We're going to go stat of the day after the break, and then Terry McCormick will join us for what will be a Titan State of the Union that you're going to want to hear. This is Main Street Media Television. You've been putting back a few, and a few becomes a few too many. For a moment, you think about calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. What's the worst that can happen? You get pulled over. Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You total your car. You kill someone. When I made the decision to host the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night, Strike and Spare is where I turned, and what a wise decision that turned out to be. They have five locations in our area with family attractions. They're perfect for birthdays, groups and corporate outings, and holiday parties. For more info, it's simple. Go to strikeandspare.com. Walmart supply chain is hiring in Lebanon. Earn up to $22.25 an hour when you join our new fulfillment center. Enjoy competitive pay and premium perks, including 100% paid college tuition, 401k match, flexible schedules, a free Walmart Plus membership that includes discounts, and free Paramount Plus, paid time off, and so much more. Fulfilling work starts right here text JOIN to 240-240. That's JOIN 240-240 to apply now. Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several iron mic pitching machines as well as a hit tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Hey everyone, I'm John English. This is Keith Wallace, and we would like to welcome you to John English Antique Sports and Cards in Shelbyville, Tennessee. We specialize in graded and ungraded sports and non-sports cards, vintage wax boxes and unopened cases. We have a large selection of PSA graded cards. We also specialize in old sports collectibles, baseball, football, basketball, golf, and tennis. You can find it all at John English Antique Sports and Cards. We are happy to be associated with Nashville's greatest sports antique, George Plaster.
Welcome back into the George Plaster Show. It is now time for Stat of the Day, brought to you by John English Antique Sports and Cards, as well as Eric Berner with Rock Castle Wealth Advisors. First for John English, you can find them over in Shelbyville, Tennessee. They're open Tuesdays through Fridays from noon to 5, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 o'clock. You can see them online as well at johnenglishgradedcards.com. they got a lot of Facebook content. As well, if you're into if you're into that sort of thing, Eric Burner as well with Rock Castle Wealth Advisors. Give Eric a call at 615-490-7052 or visit rockcastlewealth.com for more information. All right, George, I know we got to be in a little bit of a hurry here. Let's see what Michael's got cooked up for us today. In college football, which team in the last three seasons, while being unranked, has the most wins over AP ranked opponents? Okay, Watson, um, let's just you and I babble through this for a, maybe a minute, minute and a half. First one popped to mind for me was Iowa State. Yeah, Iowa State. TCU. Uh, they've been ranked. That they, Very seldom are they not at some point ranked. Does this mean never ranked or weren't ranked when they beat a, a, a ranked team? I think weren't ranked when they beat them. When they beat a, a ranked team. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. I like Iowa State. Liberty's had some big ones. That's George. another one, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't – I don't. you want to go with Iowa State? I yeah, want to go with I, Iowa I State. I can't think <laughs> quick enough right now. Let's see what the answer is. It is Mississippi oh, State. Wow. Good Clever for there, Michael. Yeah. yeah. Good one. Wow. Seven wins over AP-ranked opponents while not being ranked. Mm. Good for Mike. Yeah. That's a nice deal right there. That's all Mike, yep. Okay, we shift gears. I've asked Terry McCormick to join us, and he will in just a moment. Yes, he will. And, uh, George, this 5 o'clock hour is brought to us by Middle Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic. They combine state-of-the-art orthopedic service with a family atmosphere, whether you've got a sports injury, sprained ankle, or a major joint replacement. They've got the staff, training, and equipment that you need to get you taken care of. You can find them on the on the web at mtbj.net for more information. Terry McCormick's Daily Titans update today will be a lengthier State of the thank Union. You. Terry, thank you for taking the time to join us. You're welcome, George. So I'm going to throw out kind of a statement that I believe, and then I want to know how you all feel about what I've put up there. Right. While most people have not wanted to admit this, I believe that the Titans window, and when I say window, opportunity to compete for a championship, closed in May of last year when they traded away A.J. Brown. Nobody wanted to say it. Nobody wanted to admit it, but that was the truth. Terry? It's hard to disagree with that, George. I mean, when you look at the current state of this team and what how far they have fallen, you know, I, I think it goes to this. You know, you w- watch how the game unfolded on Sunday. And we all know that this offense runs through Derrick Henry. But the truth is, without A.J. Brown and without Traylon Burks being healthy and available for the entire season so that he could develop into something perhaps close to A.J. Brown, uh, this team has floundered. And when I say floundered, when the Jaguars got a three-score lead on Sunday, Derrick Henry, their best offensive weapon, was basically rendered useless because they couldn't run the football because it took too much time, took too much off the clock. When they lost A.J. Brown, they lost that explosiveness on the outside that you need in order to keep up with the Buffaloes and the Kansas Cities and the Cincinnatis that are dominating the AFC right now. Watson, when the trade was completed, did the window close? Well, it did for me, and it closed at that point because it – you all know, both of you, I was immediately said, if you're playing for a Super Bowl and you think you're capable of getting there, how do you trade this guy away? How do you do that? You've worked him for three years. You've built him into one of the best receivers in the league. He has proven to be that, by the way. And you trade him away after you 
after you go through this process to put your team in this position and, and you let him go, I, I just, I don't understand it. Never have understood it. They say, well, we didn't have the cap, whatever, uh, Terry and all that. I say, well, go to some of your other players, restructure their contract, whatever you got to do. Try, don't just say all of a sudden, well, he's asking for this. And so we're, we're not going to put up with that. Uh, we think that's overbearing and we'll get rid of him. And, and uh, I, I just think that was, that was the, the, the big one. The other big one to me that really bothered me was – you did not fix this offensive line in the offseason. We knew we needed to bring in some better players. And we knew Taylor Lewan was could be injured at any point. Why in the world do you not have a strong left tackle? When we had Marcus Mariota problems, guys, what did we do? We went out and signed Ryan Tannehill because we knew we might have an issue there. He can't stay healthy. How in the world do you not do the same thing with Taylor Lewan? How do you not have one really strong other tackle ready to play instead of playing with what we're playing with now? And so I see two things. I thought the offensive line not being fixed in the offseason and letting A.J. Brown go threw up big red flags to me. Terry, the Titans have benefited from the fact, whether it's fear-based or otherwise, that the locker room did not pop off when the A.J. Brown thing was done. To any great extent, I haven't heard a peep out of anybody. Now, I happen to think it's fear-based that they haven't because I'm not dumb enough to believe that behind closed doors, those guys haven't been saying in that locker room, exactly what we're saying. What the hell's going on here? You may be right. I mean, because you think about it in times past and when things like this would happen that players disagreed with. Remember going way back, the Randall Godfrey situation where they uh, asked him to take a pay cut. He did. Then they cut him anyway. Remember what Eddie George said in the aftermath of that? It certainly uh, stuck out there. And then do you think that guys like Derek Mason and Keith Bullock would have kept quiet uh, with uh, things that have been going on uh, with the roster over the past year or so. I don't. So the way I see it, and again, the way I see it may be warped, but here goes. Yeah, they're going to make the playoffs through very little achievement on their end, but the fact that the division sucks and – no matter what's going on right now in my crazy whatever, I don't see Jacksonville or Indy getting to a point to force the final game to be, you know, uh, do or die. So, Terry, my belief is, yeah, they could get a home playoff game and everybody will get all excited, you know, because it's a neat deal to host a playoff game. But the fact of it is, I don't believe they're going to win that playoff game, and I'm damn sure they're not going anywhere after that. And in my warped sense of all of this, I believe that after that's all over, playtime's over, and this thing's going to plummet. What do you think? George, you may be exactly right. I mean, there is a scenario where with a home playoff game in the first round, they could find a way to win. But – I don't think anybody realistically expects them to go through a gauntlet of, say, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Buffalo. You can throw Miami in there. If they have to play any of those type of teams, especially on the road, it's not going to happen for this team this year, George. And you're talking about if this team needs a rebuild. The question becomes, is it a hard rebuild or is it a soft rebuild? And if it's a hard rebuild, it better be done quickly because – if you're going to play in a brand new $2 billion stadium in 2026, you better have a team that's not going to go 5-12 and 12 and battling the Houston Texans for last place in the division. You know, Watson, that's a really interesting point to this is there's now a stadium consideration that, you know, I don't know who's factored what into that. Well, I've got two points. First, on the, 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 your first point of 
is it rebuild time? I'm not sure that's not what the owner is thinking because of all of these first round bad takes. Uh, we've also had some free agent issues. We've had some decent ones. We've also had some bad ones. If you go back and look at the different free agents that didn't come through, it, it, it's not just one or two. And uh, or they were there and they didn't live up to what we thought they could be and the money we spent to bring them in. And I can't ever forget in my mind in that locker room, Mike Vrabel saying, as long as I'm here, A.J. Brown will be here. And a week later, maybe less than that, he's gone. That to me, I've still got that one right at the top of my thought process. How in the world do the players sit there and not get nervous when their their boss, their head coach, one they cling to, makes that statement and then all of a sudden it don't happen? It just I just don't think that's a good thing in the locker room. I'm not as strong as you guys on the playoffs. I think this team's style is tough to play. And I'll go back to what I said in the analysis yesterday, George. My fourth thing about the game was hang on and get healthy. Hang on and win a couple of more here or there. You're going to be in anyway. Hang on and win a couple of these last four, which they should, and get these guys back and healthy. And if we go into that first game healthy, this team's back that can be back. They're all playing. I'm not I'm not one to throw up the white flag as much as quick as you all are. I think in their style, I just don't think these these Bills and Chiefs, they want to play that style in a playoff game. I mean, we went to Kansas City now and honestly should have won that game. That was back when we were a lot healthier than we are right now. So I'm not as strong about that. I still think this team could make a run. To win it all, I don't think we're good enough. I think the A.J. Brown piece threw that out the door. But to still make a run a little bit, I still am not to the point where I'm going there just yet. But when this is over, I think there's one more good year left in Derrick Henry. One. One more good one. And I would make my run through Derrick one more time and put the best team I could put together, George. So I'd do the mini deal. But I'm not sure Miss Amy doesn't sit there saying, hey, we got a brand new stadium coming in three years. We're not making any progress here. We're not making progress. Mike keeps us in games. We win in games. We're hanging around. But this team physically is not making progress. I think that's why she let him go. I think you may be onto something there, Watson. And going back to your point about whether this team can make a run, you're right in the fact that if the if some type of run is going to happen, it's going to have to be because the defense gets healthy and gets back to playing the type of football that they were playing a month ago. Yes. When they went to Kansas City and gave a good account of themselves. When they went to Green Bay and dominated Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. There's no fixing the offense at this point, pretty much. It is what it is. You're going to have protection problems. You're going to have receivers outside of Traylon Burks and Chiga Conquo and maybe Austin Hooper who are not going to make big plays for you. They're just, you know, there to maybe get two or three catches a game for 30 or 40 yards most of the time. But on defense, where things have really taken a hit and fallen apart, with Jeffrey Simmons hobbled with Danico Autry out, which is something that's not talked about enough, that guy was an impact player with Christian Fulton out and now with David Long out. If you could somehow get those guys back by the time the playoffs are going and have them healthy enough to contribute and do what they were doing back in October and November, maybe you've got a shot to upset somebody and make an unexpected run a little deeper than you can. But to me, that is the only way it would happen. Well, I just I just feel getting the right guys back healthy changes the complete look of this team. And uh, that's why I say hang on and win a couple. But whatever you got to do to get similar, if you got to take him out, Against the Cowboys, take him out. Don't play him. They should have the mindset right now, Terry. Don't blow it and get this, get the, get the seed, get the home game. But yet we should be thinking everything should be gearing toward that first round of the playoffs. And and Cunningham, Long, 
Simmons, Autry. That's the middle of your defense. And when all those were healthy, we were one of the top defenses in the NFL. Every one of those now been hurt. One of them still playing. The re- all the other three aren't even playing in any games. And, of course, Fulton has to get back. I don't think the strength of our defense was our coverage anyway. The strength of our defense was that front six, front seven, playing the run and shutting that down and getting to the quarterback. When we can't get to the quarterback, guys, we got no chance. I don't care if Christian Fulton comes back or not. We got no chance if we can't rush the quarterback. And that we got team, to get healthy to be able to do that. That team that was out there Sunday couldn't beat the Birmingham Stallions. So they weren't any better than the Jacksonville Jags uh, Sunday. No. And they weren't any better physically than the Jags Sunday, George. That's what I'm getting at. Now, they weren't ready to play. I've not seen a Mike Brable team not be into it as bad as that one was. And, Terry, I blame that on the owner and the DUI. For the last couple of weeks, this team in the locker room has dealt with a lot of junk now. And I don't, I said this, I don't care if it's high school locker rooms, college locker rooms, or NFL. I hear, well, these are men. They, it, they, uh uh-uh. uh. You in that locker room, it can affect you. Distractions affect you. And that team was distracted Saturday, Sunday, and but they weren't physically any better than who they were playing. We got to get these kids back if we're going to make any kind of run whatsoever. And and Traylon Burks is also a big piece of that. Getting him healthy and back is is a piece. So, I mean, George, Terry and George, I look out there some of these Sundays, and I can't even tell you who that is in the secondary. It's, oh, it's, it's USFL. It's, it's a new guy. And I said, who is that? What, what number is number 30? What number is number 47? And then all of a sudden they play decent, make a few plays, but they're not the answer. They're not the answer, guys. And if we were to get healthy, and I mean truly healthy, I just think Ryan Tannehill is going to have uh, – he is wanting to prove something so bad. I think the kid will come back and play really well in that first game in the playoffs. I'm telling you, I bet you right now, bet bet you both right now, if the team's healthy enough, Ryan Tannehill plays really well in that game. Terry, let's do this. We're going to go to the break, and then I want you to sort of lay out there who you think is not coming back by way of, I guess you'd call it cap casualty. Then let's get to Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill and what their contract situations either allow the team to do or not allow the team to do. Stay tuned. More of our State of the Union on Main Street Media Television. Buying or selling a home can be a very personal experience. Why not go with the team that receives nearly all of their business from referrals? Clearly a trusted name in real estate. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners has sold more than 500 homes in the last seven years. Voted best in Sumner County multiple times. Proven to be trusted with your most personal asset. Call the Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners at 615-906-8458. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners. Middle Tennessee's most trusted team in realty. I highly recommend Sumner Funeral and Cremation because of their caring nature and attentiveness to detail. Pre-planning your funeral now will bring you peace of mind and less stress to your loved ones. When the chaos of losing you happens, your family can honor and celebrate your life, knowing things are happening just as you wanted them to. Pre-planning determines the details of your funeral, cemetery services, and can be less expensive. We are honored to serve you and are always here for you in your time of need. Sumner Funeral and Cremation. Traditional. Affordable. Dignified. SumnerFuneral.com Jody Jones Dentistry can handle all your dental needs from the basics to cosmetic procedures. All of this in the nicest dental facility I have ever seen. Jody has done it right. They're located conveniently at 55 Music Square East and for an appointment, it's simple. Dial 615-259-5100 and tell them Plaz sent you. When you're thinking about golf, consider Riverside Golf Links. 
Under new ownership, the course has improved dramatically. It's now 27 holes, complemented by a nine-hole executive course. Book a tee time now at 615-847-5074 and get ready to enjoy the beauty of golf in the Old Hickory area at Riverside Golf Links. I'm Bart Durham. I was sworn in as a lawyer in 1963, and I've been working as a lawyer since then. We're a firm that does exclusively personal injury, a lot of tractor-trailer crashes. Insurance companies will open up their checkbooks when you force them to. We have systems that work. We get the most money for our clients in the shortest amount of time. I'm Blair Durham. My dad and I want to help. Give us a call at 615-242-9000. This is Eric Berner with Rock Castle Wealth Advisors. I help people in the pursuit of making their money live as long as they do. People hire me because I use a customized, individualized, and personal approach for the person I'm working with. Everyone's situation is different. If you've lost a spouse or a parent and want to make sure your inheritance is utilized and does not just disappear, I can help with that. Call me at 615-235-1058 or email Eric at rockcastlewealth.com. We are back in the wake of Sunday's disaster over at Nissan, where Jacksonville just simply toyed with the Titans. I've asked Terry McCormick and Watson Brown to get into what, for lack of a better word, I'm just throwing out there my little State of the Union kind of deal. Terry, in your opinion, in the offseason, who is pretty much foregone conclusion is gone? Well, George, I've got four guys here, and – you know, some of them are not even playing right now, so they, they're they not even available. Others have been in and out of the lineup, and some have been not overly productive. But these four guys, uh, according to SpotTrack.com, which is, and if my math is correct, could save the Titans about $44.5 million if they move on from them after the season. At the top of that list is left tackle Taylor Lewan, who we know is out for the year, second time in three years he's dealt with a torn ACL that uh, has basically cut his season to almost nothing. Uh, was injured in the second game of the year. He's got a $14.8 million cap number next year. And my guess is they will assuredly move on from that. Also, we have Robert Woods, who is scheduled to make 14.62 million after they just redid his contract uh, a, a few weeks ago. And there would be 2.6 million of dead money if they cut him from the roster after this year. Terry, also, would you classify him as no better than a number three? He's a low two, high three, probably. I think, you know, maybe you haven't seen exactly everything that he could do because. Uh, He's coming off the ACL, and there again is another issue that the Titans have been dealing with in terms of their choices in going after in trades and free agency of bringing guys in who have been injured. And Robert Woods, I don't think we've seen him fully capable of what he can do. So a $12 million savings there. Bud Dupree, now it would cost $20 million. He's on the books for $20.2 million. There would be $10.85 million to cut him, a saving of $9.15 million if they decide to move on from him. He was a big free agent signing uh, before last offseason. And uh, quite frankly, he's been in and out of the lineup so much with all these little injuries that he's had that when he's been in there, he's been pretty good, but he's just not been in there enough consistently. And then the other one, a guy that they picked up off waivers last year from the Texans, Zach Cunningham. He's injured on IR now, would save $9.25 million if they moved on from him. Okay, 
Let's get into the two big contract issues. And Watson, you feel free to, to chime in here wherever. Let's start with Ryan Tannehill. And realistically, based on the contract he has with this team, how much more time are we talking about with him? Ryan Tannehill's deal has one more year to run. That one more year would be a $36.6 million dollar salary for him and if they cut him it would basically in half 18.8 million dollars that they would have to absorb now the thing is if you cut ryan Tannehill, where are you going to go for your next quarterback because from what we saw in malik willis he's got a long way to go before he's ready to take the helm in my opinion and okay I and watson i know i know you feel the same way about that Yes, I, I'm 100%. That's why I say I think next year is the last year of the window of this group of guys. And uh, I think that they will keep Ryan Tannehill. He'll play out his contract. Uh, and and Derrick Henry is, is I think, next year might be the last of the real Derrick Henry. He'll start fading a little bit after that. So I think those two guys – are still the top dogs of the offense, in my opinion, for next year. How you guys feel, but that's the way I feel. Okay, Terry, let, let's run through Derrick Henry's stuff here and uh, tell us what you got. Okay, Derrick Henry has a $15.867 million cap hit next year. The thing is, it would still be $9 million if you cut him next year. So – only a savings of about six and a half, six point eight million dollars there. Probably not worth it, given that you would be sending the vast part of your offensive production uh, down the road with him if you if you released him. So Watson's correct there. Derrick Henry will be on this roster next year. Terry, is there a scenario where they go to Ryan Tannehill? And this is where you got to help me. My cap knowledge is not all that good. Uh, is this a scenario where you can go to him and say, look, we need some relief. Otherwise, we're going to go the route of a Case Keenum or a Colt McCoy or whatever, a bridge quarterback for a year, and you can go find wherever it is you want to go find. It's possible. My guess would be if they needed cap, cap relief from Ryan Tannehill, they might offer a short extension and say, let's take your money. Let's give you a little bit up front. Let's spread it over two years so that they gain some cap space in 2023 and then deal with the situation again, either in 2024 or 2025. But it's funny you say bridge quarterback because there's some guys out there that currently would not be under contract for 2023 that might be a little bit more interesting to take a look at than the usual Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, type of suspects who, by the way, are out there as well. But there are some younger options. Tell me if you like any of these. Jimmy Garoppolo, Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield, Mike White, Taylor Heineke, and then the big fish, Lamar Jackson, if he gets away from the Ravens. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Tom Brady. <laughs> but my oh. guess is, but my guess is, even though Tom Brady and Mike Vrabel are good friends, Tom is not frothing at the mouth to come and throw passes to Cody Hollister and Des Fitzpatrick. I don't think so. Is Giselle part of that package? I don't think so anymore. <laughs> I don't either. So, you know, you, you brought up earlier, and, and guys, I guess this is the part maybe that – Okay, now you have some tangibles. Watson says you play it out for one more year in 23. Then 24 and 25, they're going to suck. And then you're going to gear all of this two-year bad stuff to hit right as you've built the new stadium to make a comeback. I, I don't think it'll be that they just suck. I mean, you're going to re-sign Derek. Uh, you're going to re-sign Simmons, in my personal opinion. They're going to give him the big contract. Landry will be back. They're going to give him a big contract. There's going to be some, still some really good football players 
on this roster, I think, George. So I don't think it's just a, once that next year's over, they just suck. But the Super Bowl piece is what I'm talking about. I still think they can put a good football team together and might still win the division. I'm not seeing anybody else just jump up in the division anywhere. None of them are. I mean, but so I don't think it'll fall off maybe as bad as you think it will. Okay, but let's be honest about this one piece of this. Okay. The winning of the division in 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 this particular year with Indy where they are, Houston, Jacksonville, is exciting nobody. 40% of the upper deck Sunday was empty. That's a problem. You got a team that's going to host a first round playoff game and your city is bored to tears by this. They don't care. Terry, is that not an issue? Sure. If you if you think that was bad, wait till Christmas Eve uh, against the Texans. <laughs> it's going to look like the USFL hub. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I hadn't thought about that one. <laughs> Terry with the line of the day. Oh. I mean, you know, here's here's the thing. You know, Watson may be right. There, there will still be some good football players on this roster. There will still be some guys, you know, if they want to restructure and go spend some money, they can restructure Derrick Henry. They can restructure Kevin Byard and a few more guys, Ryan Tannehill. The question is, where do you go if you decide to rebuild? Because the key to a rebuild is this. You have to have a franchise quarterback and weapons for him to throw to. Now, you may get lucky. You may find an A.J. Brown-type player in a year or two in the draft. Traylon Burks may turn out to be that very guy. But if you're, if Ryan Tannehill is not your guy, and he's not your – say he's not your guy after next year, then are you rolling the dice that Malik Willis is your guy or are you going to have to find another quarterback from somewhere else? And unless you go 3-14, and 14, you're probably not finding that guy very quickly in the draft. I, I think they think Malik Willis can get to that. That's why I think Ryan Tannehill will be the guy again next year. Do I think, think they really Willis believe Malik, Malik Willis can get there. Uh, Do you think Willis can get to that? I'm not ready to say that yet myself. Terry, I don't know how you feel, but I, I'm not saying he can't, but I'm sure not ready to say he can. Not at this point. There's talent there, but it's very raw, very green, and you're going to have to – get creative and tailor the offense to him much like it's been done for Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, because he's not a drop back guy. He's not going to be, and he's probably not even really a play action guy, although you can use some of that. He's a roll out, take half the field, make your read, make your throw or take off guy. Am I right, Watson? I, I would call him a Ron Tannehill clone. Uh, I think he'd be really good at the one-on-ones when there's coverage. I don't think the drop back five out stuff fits him, but I do think crowd the box, throw it to a really good player on the outside. I think he can learn to do that. And he's got better feet and he's stronger than Ryan as Ryan's gotten older. So I think he's a Ryan Tannehill clone if he comes on, but you're going to have the same problems with him that you do Ryan. You're not going to be an all-out drop-back passing team because that's just not what fits Ryan, in my personal opinion. And that's not all. That's not fair to Ryan in all ways because the pass protection since Ryan took over here, guys, all three years has just been <laughs> you go to drop back and throw the ball, man. Uh, that's the one consistent in all three years. There's bodies around him. The pass protection hadn't been great. Okay, Terry. Um... Let's finish this up. I brought up that the window to compete for a Super Bowl has ended. You agree with that, don't you? Largely, I do, George. I mean, right now, you know, even if everybody was healthy, this is probably no better than the fourth or fifth best team in the AFC. I don't think they're better. They're certainly not better than Buffalo. I don't think they're better than Kansas City, although they do seem to have a knack for playing them close uh, when they get the opportunity and they have enough pieces in place. Uh, I think Cincinnati has become a real problem for them. And I would say they probably are on par right now with Baltimore uh, 
especially with Balt with the Lamar Jackson hurt right now, they might be in largely that same boat as the Ravens. And then I don't know. I think maybe Miami might be a better team than them. They certainly have more firepower. And for that matter, the Chargers, who they play Sunday out there. Although as soon as I say that, this is the one thing about this franchise, about the time that we back them into a corner, they come out slugging. Sunday's yeah, going to be a real test of it. And I don't think there there'll be major underdogs in that game. I mean, the Chargers They're aren't not. great either now, guys. And yeah. they got a bunch of but they had six starters out on defense Sunday. Six. So I don't know how many of those are coming back. So now the Chargers played well Sunday. We watched us play, and then we watched the Chargers play. You'd say, Well, we'll the Chargers will kill us, but the Chargers aren't a whole lot better than we are. And they're, that and they're, that's a game sitting in that middle of the pack mode themselves. That's now, a game. That's a game the Chargers had to have almost to have a – Well, and this one have is too, Billy. This right, but if, if, they, if they lose last week, it's almost dead. You know, so maybe they, they, they got up so high for that game, maybe the Titans can kind of catch them sleeping a little bit. Well, this one's just as big to them, though, Billy. Right. It, they, we right. don't have to win the game Sunday. They have to win the game Sunday. Well, the other thing, too, is this about the Chargers. They're basically – in a, in a lot of ways, kind of similar to the Titans in terms of what they have available and what they don't. Yes. The offensive line is beat up. They can't protect Justin Herbert. There were bodies all around him. You know, he does have a, a little stronger arm than Tannehill, and he's more elusive because he's younger. But they have a lot of the same problems on the offensive line. They've not been able to run the ball particularly well. And on defense, they're missing a number of starters uh, just like the Titans are right now. So it's kind of a battle of attrition on Sunday out there in Los Angeles at yeah. SoFi. Guys, I appreciate, uh, Terry, appreciate uh, you're taking the time to do this. Watson, I know you're going to want to stick around because after the break, we'll have plaster bed of the day. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Now, I can feel it. I'll, Terry, call you, I'll text you, Terry, and tell you who it takes. I know you Terry, just can't wait to find out. So. Terry's oh, I, I'm, Oh gosh, I can't wait. Watson. Terry's no, happy to get you. out. Of, he's happy to get out while he can. Terry, let me <laughs> let me put it this way: If you want to win some money, you need to listen. Oh, okay. Don't so don't bet it. the house on it, Terry. That's all I can tell you. Don't bet the house. Unless it's a college basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> I've done all right. Let me say hello to somebody who will support me, Brian Stewart. Yes. Joins me. Have you been listening to this nonsense? Oh, absolutely. And I'm like uh, I'm like everybody else. There's no way I'm laying it all on the line with you, buddy. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, so yeah. you're behind me, win or tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Win or tie, Thanks. baby, all the way. Thanks for your support. <laughs> oh, that, nice I'm talking to you. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, George, you know, the good thing is, is that I will support you in any way if it comes to uh, getting out there, doing some community service like the bowling event. Uh, brother, I got you back. But, yeah, your bet of the day, I don't know, man. I just hey, don't know. <laughs> you just stick around and watch afterwards. A lot of people uh, uh, well, could be doing a lot worse. Watson's reaction is, is good enough for me. That's all I need to know right there. See? <laughs> When he's so, smiling like that and leaning forward, I know. Walk away, Brian. Just walk away. Fine. You talk to Watson then, and you tell him about your business. Okay. I'll be, I'll be happy to. I'll be, I'll be hey, Watson, the heck crazy. with him. Just the heck with him. Let him go. He, he go, go over the corner and cough, George, and then you can come back at will. That's right. Yeah. Brian, oh. tell us about One Stop Realty. Oh. Be happy to, Billy. Uh, man. It, it, it seems like this train went off the rails a little while ago, didn't it? I, I don't know. <laughs> it, anyway, it's been off the rails for about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I have uh, I've had a busy couple of days. I have uh, been in class. Uh, I was in class all day yesterday, uh, getting some more of these certificates behind me. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on is wanting to be able to teach CE, which is continuing education for other realtors in our association. And you know how I feel that benefits uh, people that work with One Stop Realty is that uh, number one, they know that they're getting somebody that is up to date on all the current knowledge out there. Um, I remember in the Marine Corps, they, 
they handed me this green book and we called it the green monster. Uh, and that was what our drill instructors called our knowledge. He said, that's, a, that's all you need to know. That's your knowledge about everything in the world that you need to know right there. Um, it, it's not quite like that in real estate, but I did take some things from it that said, you know, the, the person that knows a little bit more than the other might have a little bit of advantage there. So that that's something that I'm always wanting to do, uh, not just for me, but for all my agents in my office, wanting to get everything that I can to be better prepared to help our clients uh, get our customers more more knowledgeable about what they're going through in the home buying and home selling process. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely jumped on the grenade yesterday, setting an eight hour class, uh, teaching us about, you know, all the good stuff about instructing. Uh, another thing I wanted to tell you, George, I had a maybe 30 minutes before I jumped on the air here with you guys, a lady walked in and she said that her parents, had sold their home with a, a one-stop realty and auction back in 2004. And she said, look, my parents have both passed away. Uh, I need to sell this home to settle their estate. And uh, it's just something that she needed to get done. And she said, I, I didn't want to turn to anybody else except for one stop because my parents just absolutely loved you guys. And she said, I, can't, I do not know the name of the agent that we worked with. But she said, I'm definitely going to One Stop Realty and Auction because they took care of us. George, that means more to me than anything uh, else. I out know there. it does. I mean, that's just absolutely fantastic. And she said, you know, I've heard great things about what you're doing over here. Um, I know you have kept the, uh, the same uh, principles all through these years and everything that One Stop's had. And that is the truth. We care about our customers. We love our clients. And we're here to help. And that's what I'm looking forward to helping this young lady settle her parents' estate, uh, get her in a better place, and let her move on with life. I love it. Man, that that is pretty heartwarming right there. Yeah. Brian, you take care. We'll do it again tomorrow. George, I appreciate it. And, uh, guys, all I can tell you all is good luck on the bed of the day. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> oh, no, you need to stick around because this could make you a lot of money. You could retire. Well, Brian, I'll text it to you just like I'm going to text it to Terry. I'll text you so you can jump on it real quick and go make yeah. you some money, okay? I, I, I think I'm just going to go try to sell some properties, and I'm going to stick with that bet. That's, I think that's, that's a better bet for you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just see about that. When we come back, this is Main Street Media Television. You've been putting back a few, and a few becomes a few too many. For a moment, you think about calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. What's the worst that can happen? You get pulled over, your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you total your car. You kill someone. After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several iron mic pitching machines as well as a hit tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Welcome to the Omni Nashville Hotel. Urban elegance with a vintage touch. Our 800-room hotel opened up in the fall of 2013 with 746 guest rooms and 54 suites.
Walmart supply chain is hiring in Lebanon. Earn up to $22.25 an hour when you join our new fulfillment center. Enjoy competitive pay and premium perks, including 100% paid college tuition. 401k match. Flexible schedules, a free Walmart Plus membership that includes discounts and free Paramount Plus. Paid time off and so much more. Fulfilling work starts right here. Text JOIN to 240-240. That's JOIN 240-240 to apply now. When I made the decision to host the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night, Strike and Spare is where I turned. And what a wise decision that turned out to be. They have five locations in our area with family attractions. They're perfect for birthdays, groups and corporate outings, and holiday parties. For more info, it's simple. Go to strikeandspare.com. This is Eric Berner with Rock Castle Wealth Advisors. I help people in the pursuit of making their money live as long as they do. People hire me because I use a customized, individualized, personal approach for the person I'm working with. Everyone's situation is different. One area I can help with is if you are newly or nearly retired or maybe have changed jobs and have an old 401k account. You may need more information to help you clearly understand your options. Call me at 615-235-1058 or email eric at rockcastlewealth.com. For Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly, they welcome every opportunity to serve and satisfy their clients. Whether you are looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and remodel is unique, luxurious, completed on time, and within budget. Contact them today to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects by logging on to DonnellyTimmons.com. Welcome back into the final segment of the George Plaster Show on your Tuesday evening. It's almost time for Plaster's Bet of the Day. We've got Terry and Brian tuning in very closely, as many uh, many others, thousands of others tuning in for, uh, for the Bet of the Day. Since 1975, Bart Durham Injury Law has aggressively protected the rights of a broad range of victims of car accidents and personal injury in both Tennessee and Kentucky. If you, too, have seen your life interrupted by an injury on a highway, in a hospital, or at your workplace, let their attorneys do the work fighting for the full financial compensation that you need. Learn more about Bart Durham Injury Law by logging on to bartdurham.com. All right, let's check out what happened last night, George, in that uh, that NFL game. I'll be interested to uh, to see if both of you guys stayed up for that whole game. You probably didn't need to because you knew who won, uh, who was going to win at the end. But, George, four games above 500 now. I think oh, yeah. that, that might be another yeah. record. There's a lack of respect. That's being shown. Well, I, I was going to bring that right up. I was going to say you're fairly hot as of late, but doesn't seem to really doesn't hey, seem to uh, to register. Hey, no. I, I'll be glad to text this to both guys where they can bet immediately on whatever he picks here. I mean, that's one point one. That's what I said. No, I, I know that, but it was the it was the condescending way it was put out there. Just, hey, send in the text is send in the text. Uh huh. Well, send this. Show him, Billy. Okay. We got, uh, let's see. There it is. College basketball again. Yes. You're taking Alabama minus six and a half against Memphis. You're darn tootin' I am. Both of these teams are on a big high. Memphis beat Auburn on a neutral site. Huge win for Penny Hardaway. Alabama went to Houston and beat the number one team in the country. So who has the bigger letdown tonight? Normally, to me, the letdown is the team that doesn't have anybody pushing them. Alabama will have that Coleman Coliseum crowd behind them. I think that'll be a big help. And I also think they're better. Not by much, 
but I do think they're better. So Watson, you take that and send it to Terry and send it to Brian because uh, they're dying will, to know. I will be glad to do that for you, baby. I can feel your, uh, your I will, as soon as I get off this show, I'm going to send it to both of them. I know, Brian. I know they just anxiously, anxiously. What, what, what was that word? Anxiously. Brian might have already bet on his tide earlier today. Oh, listen, he'll be happy with me. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be very yeah. happy with me. Yeah. So they're 6.5 better. So they are better. Uh, they got to be six and a half better. Yeah. Listen, you try to behave until uh, tomorrow. And let me say this in all seriousness I am sorry for your loss of a really good friend. Yeah. We all go through this, don't we? And it just, it makes us all take a deep breath and understand how precious life is. All of us, all two of you and me, get up every day and smell the roses, guys. That's what I'd say. And Amen. I'm a good bit older than both of you. While you're where you are in your lives, smell the roses. Don't put everything behind a job or problems or whatever. Smell the roses Amen. and enjoy life the best you can. Amen. Man, that's a great way to end the show. Billy, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, George. See you guys. Stop and smell the roses. This is Main Street Media Television.